A knockout is what a boxing fan who comes to the podium or sits at home looking at the screen wants to see. A bright, brutal knockout. Boxing fans will remember some knockouts in 10 and even 50 years. In today's article, the author will talk about the knockouts that are mosted in his memory. Number 2. On November 20th, 2010, a rematch between Paul Williams and Sergio Martinez took place. The first meeting of the guys took place in December 2009, and then Williams celebrated a close victory on points. Having drawn conclusions from the first fight, Sergio did not trust the outcome of the fight in the hands of the judges this time. A powerful left swing sent Williams into a heavy knockdown in the second round. Subsequently, this particular knockout became the leader in the list of the best knockouts of the year. Good left hand, oh. and down goes right. Williams! I think it was a right, right hand. Right hand, Williams through the left, Williams down. He's not getting up, guys. Not getting up. That is the knockout of the year, if nothing else. A sensational, shocking, one-punch knockout of a normally iron-chinned, top-notch fighter. Weavers as a man was so much on the attack and aggression that he didn't even expect I see the punch. And that's the worst punch in the world, a punch you don't see. Martinez's left got there first. And Williams was out from the moment the punch hit him. Number 8. On March 20th, 2010, Vladimir Klitschko defended the IBF and WBO heavyweight titles against the encroachments of Eddie Chambers. The boring duel took place under the dictation of the Ukrainian who, nevertheless, could not put enough pressure on the opponent avoiding confrontation. Klitschko gewinnt auch Runde 11. Das ist ein K.O.-Sieg. Weil er auch hier nicht getroffen wird, weil die Deckung gut steht. Vladimir versucht... But at the end of the 12th round, Vladimir still caught the American with a terrible left hook. It was already clear from the way Chambers fell that it was pointless to start counting down. Number 5. The first meeting of the legendary Shane Mosley with Ricardo Mayorga, held on September 27, 2008, was held in equal opposition, and everything went to the fact that the winner would be determined by the Trinity at the ring. Mayorga was gliding on by. Good right hand by Shane Mosley. Kind of hesitated and then popped Mayorga with a right hand lead. Good left hand by Mayorga. Knocks Mosley back momentarily. Left hook by Shane Mosley. And a perfect right hand, busting Mayorga on the top. And as Larry said, he's a basic fundamental fighter. He doesn't do anything unusual, but he's just Paper so right consistent. Hand by Mosley. Whip saws Mayorga with another right hand. That one hurt him. His feet were doing and funny a good things. Left hook by Mosley. But he's come back. Shane is making his point down the stretch. And another right hand. Busts my organ in the top. This is what you love about Mosley. Right? right? He's got the crowd on its feet, cheering, 
for something dramatic to happen here, just as he did against Oscar De La Hoya eight years ago. But at the end of the 12th round, the American shook Mayorga and sent him to the ring floor. The Nicaraguan got up, but immediately missed Mosley's terrible backhand, which in a second sent him into a deep knockout before the end of the fight. It's a knockout. He finally got it. Brilliant stuff by Shane Mosley. Number 11. If the meeting of Shannon Briggs with Sergei Lyakovich, which took place on November 4, 2006, was determined by the decision of the judges, few people would have remembered about it. For 11 rounds, the WBO champion cautiously danced around the opponent, gaining points with stinging attacks and the American made lazy attempts to catch him with a blow. Now, the conventional wisdom is that we're headed into rounds in which a couple of right hands are more active. That's pretty obvious. And now he is, and he's landed the heavyweight title as a challenger. He's landed. Well, hold it. Keep him up. Oh, there's Big a right, right hand, hand by Briggs. Wow. That got Sergey's attention. You know, the sense of it from him. Oh, oh. big wicket. Mm. There's a, wow, a big right hand again. Of significant shots. 20 seconds. But he is really... But at the very end of the 12th round, Briggs managed to shake his opponent, sending him into a heavy knockdown. Lyakovich managed to get up, but Briggs did not let him go. Shannon's powerful attack knocked the Belarusian out of the ropes. The fight was stopped in one second after its completion. Onto the scorer's table. It's all over. Bobby Ferrer is waving it off. Ferrer. Number 13. On May 19, 2012, Danish boxing legend Mikkel Kessler met Alan Green. The beginning of the fight was not easy for the Viking, who in the first round was in the only knockout of his career. But the Danes seized the initiative and already in the fourth round, brutally knocked out Green with a powerful left side punch. Bingo! Bingo! Mikkel Kessler rein! Mikkel Kessler er verdensmester igen! Fantastic! Alexander Usyk versus Tony Bellew. Usyk's precision and power were on full display in 2018 when he landed a devastating left hook that ended Bellew's hopes of victory. Number 10. On July 26, 1986, the rising star of world boxing Mike Tyson met with the promising Marvis Frazier, the son of the great Joe Frazier. This fight remained in the annals of history as the shortest duel in the professional career of Iron. Already at the 30th second, Frazier was severely knocked out by a series of powerful uppercuts. Tyson comes out sluggish. He comes out smoking like Marvis's father, Joe. Marvis must move or we're going to be out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Frazier is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. And he's going to stop the fight. 
It did not last 20 seconds. Tyson goes over to take a look at Marvis Frazier, obviously quite concerned. A terrific uppercut. The same punch with which Tyson knocked out Jesse Ferguson the first time you saw him here on ABC Sports. Watch the uppercut, the right uppercut. Number 18. On June 8th, 2013, Adonis Stevenson broke into the elite of professional boxing, taking the WBC light heavyweight title from Chad Dawson. The fight ended already in the first round. The powerful left hook of Superman did not give Dawson the slightest chance of continuing the fight. Dawson. Chad Dawson, I'm sitting next to Andre, would think better than to win that light heavyweight championship. He says he has friends here. People pick him up at the airport. He's going to be able to get into position to land his power body shots. Chad has to change his mind right now. So hook to the body. Well, that could be a case of nerves. It's not just nerves, but that body shot at will. It's going to take some more work. Down goes Dawson. Comes as he backs oh, up by the rope. And the referee's going to stop it. He's the light heavyweight champion of the world. That is not only... to look in Dawson's eyes. He was out. It wasn't okay. Jim, you made the comment earlier today. He did that with contempt. I mean, he basically said, against whom? Uh, that's mean, you know, Emmanuel Stewart, my left hook. Uh, that's a good, because, you know, I have a good great sparring. So that's why uh, I catch him with uh, my left. I put my left, I catch him. And that's a beautiful punch. And soon I have a good chance. I put my left. The game plan, use my speed, put the pressure in. You know why now, why, why uh, Kessler, Frosch don't want to fight me? Why people don't want to fight me now? You understand now? Champion of the world, Adani. Jamal Charlo. 